The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Six To give you more real deep down smoking enjoyment, Lucky's pay more. Yes, to give you a finer cigarette, Lucky Strike pays millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. L.S. MFT. L.S. MFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Just listen to the words of a veteran tobacco buyer, Mr. James Watson Davis of Wilson, North Carolina. He recently said, I've been a tobacco buyer for 20 years now. That's why I know what tobacco makes a good smoke. And in those years, time after time, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine quality leaf. Ripe, mellow tobacco that's great for good smoking. I've smoked Lucky's for 18 years. And a recent survey reveals more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke. For your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky Strike. Remember, Lucky's pay more, millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco to give you a finer, milder, more enjoyable cigarette. Good reason to make your next carton Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, around this time of year, Jack Benny goes through a rather peculiar annual routine. He takes inventory of all the commodities in his pantry. As we look in, Rochester and Jack are checking off the items. Two cans of corned beef hash. Two cans of corned beef hash. Four bottles of olives. Rochester, slow down. I can't write that fast. <laughs> Mr. Benny, I can't understand why you take inventory every fall. You run this house just like a grocery store. I do not. I just... Uh-oh. I broke the point of this pencil. Where's the pencil sharpener? In the cash register. <laughs> oh, yes. Darn it, I hit the 60-cent key instead of no sale. Now my books won't balance. Well, let's get on with the inventory, Rochester. Yes, sir. Six cans of peas. Six cans of peas. Five cans of corn. Five cans of corn. 436 cans of pork and beans. 430... Rochester, how come we got so many cans of pork and beans? Don't you remember? Mr. Paley threw those in to clinch the deal. <laughs> Oh, yes, one for each station. <laughs> now, continue, Rochester. Two bottles of vanilla extract. Two bottles of vanilla extract. One bottle of Lydia Pinkham's. <laughs> one bottle of Lydia Pinkham's. Twelve slices of white bread. Twelve slices of white bread. Seven slices of whole wheat bread. Seven slices of whole wheat bread. Oh, say, boys. What is it, Rochester? When we come to the toothpicks, let's just estimate. <laughs> okay for the plain ones, but the colored ones will count. <laughs> now, let's finish this. Huh? Yes, sir. Six bottles of ketchup. Six bottles of ketchup. Six bottles of chili sauce. Six bottles of chili sauce. Three cans of strong heart. Three cans of Strongheart. Boss, why have we got that? I borrowed it from the Coleman's. Well, we haven't got a dog. Why'd you borrow it? Well, they were out of butter, and I didn't want to leave empty-handed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use it someday. Continue. One sack of Idaho potatoes. One sack of Idaho potatoes. Rochester, answer the door. I'll finish the inventory. Yes, sir. Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Welcome to Ralph's Supermarket. <laughs> what? Come right in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you doing up on that stool? Oh, I'll be finished in a minute. I'm just putting some stuff back on the top shelf. Would you please hand me those two jars of caviar? Oh, fine. Fish eggs from a frightened mackerel, and it calls it caviar. <laughs> Mary, I've got a cold. Why do you have to come over here and... Jack, look out! The stool! The caviar! Oh. Uh, 
Jack, are you hurt? No, no, I'm all right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? With those fish eggs in your ear, you look like you're going upstream to spawn. <laughs> upstream to spawn, upstream to spawn. Man nearly kills himself, and you talk about romance. <laughs> Mary, look at it. I got a cold. Will you not bother me? Answer that, will you, please? Okay. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Hey, Livy. Hey, how come you're answering the phone? New clause in your contract? <laughs> no, Phil. Jack would have answered it, but he can't. He's lying on the floor. Holy smoke, he's getting as bad as Remley. <laughs> It isn't that at all. Would you like to speak to Jack? Talk to that old man when I got you, Livy. <laughs> uh, why, you gorgeous bundle of loveliness. <laughs> you beautiful streamlined doll. You. <laughs> you gorgeous hunk of... Let me speak to Jackson. <laughs> uh, Phil, what happened? Alice just walked into the room. <laughs> Oh, say, Phil, I'd like to talk to Alice. Put her on the phone. If I do, it'll count as a guest spot. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I'll put Jack on. Jack, Phil wants to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Well, how's Paley's comic today? <laughs> I'm all right. What do you want, Phil? Look, Jackson, I know it's kind of late notice, but I wonder if you could give me a couple of tickets for today's broadcast. Well, I might be able to scrape up two. Who are they for? Well, my nephew who lives in Kentucky just got married, and he and his wife are visiting us. He's a swell kid. 19 years old. 19 and married? How old is his wife? 10. <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil. You mean to say your nephew married a 10-year-old girl? He felt sorry for her. First husband was a louse. <laughs> Bill, stop making things up. Now, who do you want the tickets for? Well, to tell you the truth, it's for Remley, but he was afraid to ask you. <laughs> well, he should be ashamed after what happened last time. He gave that ticket to his girl. She almost started a riot in the studio. Imagine her walking up and down the aisle doing a thing like that. That wasn't her fault, Jackson. The band never should have played A Pretty Girl is Like a Melody. <laughs> All right, but where did she get the balloons? Where did she get the balloons? Where did you get the pen? Oh, quiet! <laughs> All right, Phil, I'll give you the tickets uh, at rehearsal. Thanks, Jackson. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, uh, Jackson. What? You're old, but you're cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm cute. Goodbye. <laughs> Phil always has to call me when I'm busy. Oh, Rochester. What is it, boy? I knocked over all these cans when I fell off the stool. Will you pick them up while I go on with the inventory? Yes, sir. Mary, will you please help me? I'll call off the items and you write them down. Oh, sure, Jack. Five bottles of vinegar. Five bottles of vinegar. Three boxes of rye crisp. Uh, three boxes of rye crisp. Eleven cans of Johnson's wax. <laughs> Eleven cans of Johnson's... Jack, why do you need all that wax? It's for the program, Mary. You put it on your head and the jokes slip your mind. <laughs> all right, Jack. I made a mistake last week. You deducted it from my salary. Now, let's forget it. All right, now, let's keep going, Mary. One leg of lamb. One leg of lamb. Two packages of bacon. Two packages of bacon. One side of beef. Jack, that's me. Oh, 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 hello, Don oh, Hello, Jack, Mary Hello, Don Say, Jack, I know you're busy, but I brought the sportsman quartet with me And they want to run over the commercial for the program But, Don, I didn't think they could be with us this Sunday I thought they were being held over at the Orpheum Theater Oh, they are, that's why they had to rush over here between shows to let you hear the song Oh This is their second week at the theater, Jack, and they're a terrific hit there Well, isn't that wonderful? So you're back at Vaudeville, eh, boys? Hmm, <laughs> that's nice uh, Tell me, fellas how does it feel being on the stage again? Do you like it? There's no business like show business like no business we know. Playing at the Orpheum is thrilling. Standing out in front on opening nights. Smiling as you watch the theater filling. And there's your billing up there in lights. There's no people like 
show people they smile when they are low. Thank you, Jack, for booking us. Twas heaven sent. Yes, thanks to you, we can pay our rent. That's all right. But don't worry, Jack, you'll get your 10%. Thank Let's you. Let's go on with What the about the show. commercial, fellas? Commercial. No cigarette, none you can get. Like luckies, we know. Luckies are a smoke that you will treasure. Luckies have a taste that you will like. There's no way we know to really measure the smoking pleasure in Lucky Strike. So buy Luckies and try Luckies, you'll like Luckies, we know. At the auctions, Lucky Strike pays millions more for fine tobacco, that's what it's for. Buy a pack of LSMFT before you go on to the show. Let's go right on with the show. John, that was simply wonderful. I'm glad you liked it, Jack. Now we've got to rush back to the theater. The boys will be on stage in 20 minutes. Then you better hurry. Goodbye, fellas. So long, Don. So long. Gee, Mary, just the mention of vaudeville brings back memories. I wish I was back on the stage again. Ah, those were the days. Did you ever play the Orpheum here, Jack? Yes, Mary. I even remember the bill. There was Block and Sully, Willie West and McGindy, the Avon Comedy Four, Fink's Mules, and Fred Allen. <laughs> Ah, uh, gee, he was a clever guy. Alan? No, Fink. <laughs> now, what did I do with my pencil? I want to finish this. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Mel Blank. Oh, Hey, fun. can you use me on your program Sunday? No, I can't. And Mel, why do you keep bothering me? I told you I can't use your imitations on my program. But I don't just imitate actors. I imitate world-famous politicians like Winston Churchill, Anthony Eden, uh, General De Gaulle, and that fellow who just visited President Truman. Who's that? Al Jolson. <laughs> now cut that out! And I can't use you on my show, Sunday. Goodbye. I can't understand that guy. He knows if I had a job, I'd give it to him. I'm his agent. <laughs> So, oh, Mary. Uh, just a minute, Jack. Go ahead, Rochester. Twelve cans of crushed pineapple. Uh, twelve cans of crushed pineapple. Nineteen cans of condensed milk. Nineteen cans of condensed milk. Two thousand four hundred and fifty-six cans. Cans? Cans of what? Just cans, Mr. Benny. Don't throw nothing away. <laughs> Certainly not. I paint them and hang them on my Christmas tree. Now, Mary, I can finish this up with Rochester, so... Shall I answer the door, boss? No, don't bother getting down from the stool. I'll answer it. I'd like to get this inventory finished before we... Well! Hello, Mr. Benny! Mr. Kitchen! Mr. Kitzel, it's certainly nice seeing you again. What are you doing around this neighborhood? Mr. Benny, I came over to say goodbye. I'm going to New York to see the World Series. Well, that's wonderful, Mr. Kitzel. I didn't know you were interested in baseball. Interesting. <laughs> you know, Mr. Benny, when I was a boy, I played baseball all the time. Really? Yes, indeed. I used to pitch for my high school team. No kidding. Well, were you a good pitcher? <laughs> they used to call me Satchel Kitzel. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I could pitch fast, slow, inside, outside. But my specialty was, you should excuse the expression, a saliva ball. <laughs> Hey, you must have been pretty good. Pretty good. After I left high school, I became a professional and played ball with the Mexican League. And then after nine years, I oh, was... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You were down in Mexico for nine years? Where do you think I got this accent? <laughs> No, you're joking, aren't you? Oh, no, no, no. no but, That's Mr. Kissel, I'm certainly surprised to hear about your interest in baseball. Oh, that's so surprising. In 1938, I was the most popular man at the World Series. 
Who my, you should have heard the crowd yelling for me. You mean you played in the World Series? Who played? I was selling hot dogs, pickle in the middle, and the mustard on top with a hey baba riba and a little beef bop. Goodbye, so long. Ah, oh, gee, it was nice seeing Mr. Kitzel again. Jack, we're almost finished with the inventory. That's good. Say, Mary, I certainly appreciate your helping me, and I'll tell you what. If you'd like to stay for dinner, I'll take you out later. We'll go to a nightclub. A nightclub? Oh, I'd love to, Jack, but I already have a date. Oh. I hope it doesn't spoil your evening. No, no, no. I'll take my pen. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Now, Mary, if you want to... Oh, there's the door again. Come in. Well, Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask you if you... Uh, hello, would... Dennis. Hello. Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask you if you How would... How do you feel, kid? Fine. Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask now, you... Close you the would... door, will you, Dennis? Okay. Now, Dennis, what did you... Dennis! <laughs> How do you like that? He locked himself out. <laughs> oh, well, it's just... A... Come in. Well, Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask you if it would be all right if I could... Dennis, when I told you to close the door, I bet you should come in first. Oh. Now, what do you want to ask me? If I could use your phone, my house is on fire. <laughs> now, Dennis, don't be silly. If your house is on fire, why would you come all the way to Beverly Hills to use the phone? I want the fireman to think I'm a big shot. <laughs> Dennis, close the door, will you? Just my luck. This time he stayed on the inside. <laughs> now, look, kid, I'm busy, so don't bother me with all those silly things you make up. Come on, Mary, let's finish this inventory. Okay. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yes, yes. I thought you were cleaning house like my mother did the other day. I'm not cleaning house. Boy, did she get rid of a lot of stuff. She threw some old curtains out of the living room, a broken rocking chair out of the bedroom, and she even took the moose head out of the shower. <laughs> now, Mary, let's... Dennis. She took the what... Out of the shower? The moose head. You're going to ignore that, eh, Mary? <laughs> I certainly am. Hmm. My father put it in there, Wait but a my minute, mother Dennis. did... Wait a minute, Hold it a minute. I know I'll regret asking you this. But why would your father put a moose head in a shower? The other end would look silly. <laughs> Well, that I can understand. Now, Dennis... <laughs> Dennis, besides your house being on fire and your father being in a shower with a moose, what else is new? Well, I've been rehearsing my song all week. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to. Anything. Go ahead. Okay.
Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, that was very good. Now, just sit down for a few minutes. I want to finish my inventory. We've got everything listed, boss. All we have to do is put the last few things back on the shelves. Good, good. Rochester, I'll get up on the stool, and you can hand the stuff to me. No, no, Mary, I'll get up there. Oh, Jack, you've had enough trouble. I'll get up on the stool. Help me. Okay. Up. Up. Don't let your skirt catch on the stool. I'll lift it a little. <laughs> Dennis! <laughs> Dennis, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I wasn't whistling at Mary. Now, Dennis, don't it I. You were looking at Mary's limbs, and you were whistling at her. Now, weren't you? Well, yes. Good, good. Mary! <laughs> you get down off the stool, and I'll eat. Get up there. I gotta get this job finished. Help me up, Rochester. Here you are, boys. Up, up. Dana! <laughs> now stop it. That was me. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> now, Rochester, if I push these cans on the top of the shelf back a little, I think we can squeeze in a couple of more. Jack! Jack, the stool, look out! <laughs> My own fault. Jack, right. that big can of tomato juice is falling. Look out! <laughs> oh. Jack. 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 Oh, my goodness, he's unconscious. Jack! Boss! Boss, speak to me! Speak to me! Gee, he's really out cold. Rochester, help me. Put a pillow under his head. Dennis, go get a glass of water. I'd rather have a Coke. <laughs> You go get it. Jack. Jack. Gee, Rochester, look at that big bump on his head. Yeah, hope he isn't hurt too bad. Ugh. Here's the water, Mary. Well, don't stand there. Throw it. In his face, not mine. <laughs> oh. He's coming too, Miss Livingston. Where am I? Uh, what what happened? Well, after you fell, a big can of tomato juice hit you on the head. Oh. Uh, oh. Are you all right, Jack? Yes. Yes, I feel all right, Mary. It's, you know, it's just that... Oh, Mary, you were worried about me, weren't you? You've been crying. Dennis threw water in my face. <laughs> uh, Rochester, help me up, will you please? Uh, here you are, boss. Uh, Jack, uh, you better sit down. You were hit pretty hard got a big bump on your head. But, Mary, I feel perfectly all awesome. There's somebody at the door. I'll get it. Jack, let Rock... Mary, don't worry. A little hit on the head, they make such a big thing out of it. Telegram for Jack Benny. I'm Jack Benny. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Oh, just a minute, boy. Uh, here's a tip for you. Gee, uh, I I'm sorry, sir, but I haven't got change for a dollar bill. I don't want any change. Keep it. It's yours. Oh, boy, a dollar tip. Thank you. Jack. Gee, I wonder who could be sending me a telegram. Uh, Jack. Well, there's only one way to find out. Jack. What is it, Mary? You just gave that Western Union boy a dollar tip. Yes, wasn't that enough? <laughs> if, you, if you don't think so, I'll call him back. Uh, and... uh, no, no, Jack. No, no, no. Mary, what's the matter with you? Uh, Jack, are you sure you feel all right? I'm fine, fine. What's the matter with you, kid? Look, and excuse me, kids, while I read my telegram. Dennis, did you see what happened? Yeah, maybe it's that bump on his head. He's never given a Western Union boy a dollar before, has he, Rochester? Only once in that time he kept the kid's bicycle. <laughs> Hey, kids, I'm certainly glad I got this wire. Uh, who's it from, Jack? The boys at Phil's band. They're giving Sammy the drummer a surprise birthday party tonight, and they want me to be there. Excuse me a minute. I, I want to make a telephone call. Hello? 
Uh, Beverly Hills Liquor Store? Uh, this is Jack Betty talking. That's right. Listen, I'd like to order a little gift for a birthday party. Do you have some very fine imported champagnes? What? I said Benny, Jack Benny. <laughs> no, no, not one bottle of champagne. I want to order a whole case. Huh? Yes, Benny, B-E-N-N-Y. <laughs> yes. Now send this case of champagne to Sam Weiss, 4720 Mary Ellen Avenue, Van Nuys. No, no, don't send the bill to him. Send it to me. <laughs> yes, B-E-N-N-Y. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, Rochester. Rochester, this is serious. Well, kids, I'm going upstairs and get dressed for the party. See you tomorrow, Mary. So long, Dennis. Bye, Mr. Benny. Ah, this ought to be a lot of fun tonight. I wonder what suit I should wear. I think I'll wear the brown one. Yada dee da dum, da dee da dum, da dum, dum dee da da dum, da dum, dum dee da da dum. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis is in immediate need of help. The March of Dimes funds have been exhausted fighting this year's epidemic of polio. Fourteen and a half million dollars must be raised within the next seven days. So won't you please help to fight this dread disease? Please send your dimes and dollars to polio, care of your local post office. We cannot abandon America's children. Remember, send your dimes and dollars to polio in care of your local post office. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. But first, six tables. To give you a finer, milder, more enjoyable cigarette, Lucky's pay more. Yes, at the tobacco auctions, Lucky Strike pays millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. Six tables. Picture a vast high ceiling warehouse, the aisles lined with baskets of golden tobacco. Here's an especially fine basket of mild, ripe leaf. The auctioneer sings out the bids. Higher and higher goes the price. Now at the very peak bid, you hear... And another basket of fine, light, naturally mild tobacco is sold to Lucky Strike. And that's the way it goes time and again at market after market. Yes, Lucky's pay more, millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, mild, mellow tobacco that gives you more, far more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment. So for a finer smoke, smoke the cigarette of fine tobacco. Yes, light up a Lucky. You'll agree, in all the world, there's no finer cigarette than Lucky Strike. Yes, Doctor. Mr. Benny is acting very strangely. Well, Doctor, first he gave a Western Union boy a dollar tip, and then he ordered a case of champagne as a birthday gift for a... What? Yes, Benny. B-E-N-N-Y. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day, and stay tuned for the Amos Nandy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.